Welcome to this conversation brought to you by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer. And today I'm speaking with mine and Vicky's very first mentors, Tim and Bev Walden out of Kentucky. How's it going, you guys? Great. Yeah, hey, things are going awesome. Great. Loving the I, convention. And- I, you know, I, I say that because Vicky says this all the time. Some of the very first people that we looked up to, we have Darden Drake was a big deal for us. Uh, Tim Kelly and you guys, Michael Taylor. And so it's pretty cool for me. Uh, Just so you know, really. To it's be an honor to be in that crowd. At, uh, it's a yeah. it's a great crowd, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. I honor to be in and any you, of those names. And you're and you and you're really in there for us. There's certain people that just really stood out, and and we were like, that's we want, we want to emulate them. Wow. I say emulate instead of copy. <laughs> Good move. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. We do. <laughs> but you guys have always been great. And then there's always certain people that are like really good, cool people that you think outside of the industry, like, yeah, you know what? If I lived in their town, I think I think we'd be hanging out. Absolutely. We'd have are some dinner every once in a while. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we Absolutely. Would. We, we have sure fun would. anytime we're together. <laughs> Can you guys um, just talk about yourselves for a little bit? And, 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 and who you are and, and what you're about and what you do. Sure. You want me to start or you want to start? You start. <laughs> well, He's always okay. the icebreaker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do uh, play by play. She does color. I like that. Uh, that's, that's the way that's our true. marriage is. Yes, it is true. And I, I'm, I'm glad of it. But uh, <laughs> 12 years old, I guess, is when my career started. You know, my father was... Uh, paralyzed from uh, his armpits down he had an accident and uh, he was a commercial photographer Mm -hmm. and he switched to portrait about a year of surgeries and recovery and long long story of how we got there but uh, after about a year he got back into photography but he had to get into portrait photography Mm -hmm. he used to say "Ah, portrait photographers aren't real photographers (laughs) and later in life he said boy he said uh I, I could not be more wrong. It was like one yeah. of the greatest things that ever happened. He loved people so much. But, you know, 12 years old, I'd go in the dark room with him and uh, and, and watch him print and, and listen to him and, and watch him taste the fixer. I think he embalmed himself because he always looked about 30 years old. <laughs> when, when he was 75, I, I, said, I said, Dad, this is disgusting. People think you're my younger brother. I said, I know you, you embalmed yourself with all that. I went out and bought some rapid fixer, you know. I'm like, chug this stuff. <laughs> but it still didn't work for me. For those but, of you that don't know what he's talking about, this is really funny. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but uh, I tell everybody that what, what drove me to photography, honestly, was not his talent, as talented as he was. And it really wasn't even photography. It mm. was how can you love something so much? Like he was so passionate about it. Yeah. It was like therapy. It was like a reason for him to, to push on. Mm. And so I think for me, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to investigate this because if somebody loves something that much, maybe there's something to it. So yeah. then I en- ended up getting bit by the bug and 16 started shooting and the rest is, as they say, yeah. history. Yes. <laughs> and what about your lovely wife? Oh, wow. Well, she's, she's pretty amazing. I my, agree. My dad was, uh, my dad was quite the technician and he pushed me, you know, be excellent, be excellent. But Bev, in all in all honesty, is one of the most creative people I ever met. So when we married, she had uh, some art background, and she brought, I think, to our mix um, a level of creativity that we really needed. So you have like the technical and the creative, yes, the perfect the perfect marriage. Well, there you go. <laughs> in, in perfect mix, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we met in high school. A lot of people don't know we met in high school, mm-hmm. and I actually asked him to a movie because I had to do it for a class and didn't have any money. <laughs> that can be bought. That was our, that was our first Let there be no doubt. I am for sale. <laughs> there is and a price. There and is he still price. is. You can contact us. <laughs> there is a price. It's seven fifty for a ticket to a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. And so, Whatever it uh, takes. <laughs> so uh, was it the first time that you brought me home? We went out and you said, I'm going to marry you someday. And I said, you are cray cray. Whatever. But here we are. Yeah. Yeah. So here we so are. I ask you. Who was right? <laughs> yes. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Drop yes. that mic. Yeah, drop That's right. that mic. That's a suspended Don't. mic, but you can drop yeah, it. Man. Don't really drop awesome. it. But anyway, then, uh, <laughs> so I went on to, I was in uh, art and language, really, in studies. And then when I knew I was going to marry 
him and maybe run a studio. I got my degree actually in business management, which was horrible. Yeah. Just want to say I flunked uh, paper copying. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't do a French fold. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it just that just happens. But I kind of learned math a little. Well, don't even go there. Okay. He looked at me. Yeah, I saw the look. <sighs> so, um I remember your dad saying, don't work in the business with us because it's putting all your eggs in one basket. Well, I was wondering about that. Yeah. yeah. I was in the bank. I worked for a bank. Believe it or not, I was a teller and yeah. I actually could balance my drawer, <laughs> even though Tim thinks I don't know math. But you were, but you were warned. That, so I'm wondering don't, about that. Don't. You were warned, he don't, said, don't, do don't, not. You were yeah. warned, don't do what you did. Yeah. Yeah. And I think probably it would be good advice for the average person. Right. Yeah. But for us, you know. I don't know. We've, we just have been good partners in that way. And, right. And it, it, it has worked because of the roles we play and the way we see each other. But, but I do think my dad was giving us advice that would be true 90% of the time. Right. Cause it's, but for us, we, we pulled it off and, uh, and it worked out to be different than he what, expected. What do you attribute that to? Because I have a, pers- I have a, a theory mm-hmm. Right. From my perspective, but I'm curious what you guys would attribute that to. Well, for for me, it's mutual respect. You know, I mean, I'm that's so glad you said. Yeah, respect. mutual respect. I mean, uh, you know, we we each bring something different to the table, and and we respect, you know, in in the other in that role, and uh, and we're able to function together because of that. And we and what's really it's odd as as it sounds. We can disagree, and it's not personal because right. of that respect. So we can disagree on, on say, a decision, but it's that's not a marriage issue for us. That's a business issue. And then sometimes, you know, there'll be an area she'll say, well, you know what, I don't see it that way, but I'm going to trust you. Or there'll be an area where she's maybe, you know, the division that she runs or painted division where I'll say, you know what, I'm not, I can't see that, but. You know, this is your thing, so we're gonna we're gonna go that route, and just that mutual respect. Helps so you've us. developed these fairly defined roles. Yeah, is that fair to say? Very defined. Mm-hmm. I think because we're not stepping on each other's toes all the mm-hmm. time. You know, I do what I do. He does what he does. And, you know, a lot of people like it's funny. Our friends will say, "Tell me something," and think he'll know because they told me. <laughs> <laughs> but we're like ships passing in the night when yeah. we're, you know what I'm so saying? So perfect. <laughs> yeah. the, you know, and I'm, I'm like, oh gosh, like three days. Oh, I think I was supposed to tell you something. I don't remember what now. That happens to me all yeah, the time. Yeah, they think because we're like one person, right. and but we're li- we're two people. Welcome to the club, my friend. <laughs> and I get the vows, the whole two become one and two shall yeah, become one. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, but not in that way. No. no. And no, because we're also, we're when we're at work, we're really focused on our right. what we're doing. Doing, right what each of us are doing and um, where our desks are in different rooms <laughs> yes and workstations because you know we don't you know we, we're so focused we don't want to get into conversations and get sidetracked and yeah we've got so much to do and get accomplished in the day so we've just know, moved just back into focused. the studio our, our desks are now temporarily at least for the time being in the same office again like they used to be, right? Like way back when yeah. they separated. Now we're now we're back in the same office again. Yeah. Right. We still will text and email <laughs> or chat. We do that too. We'll in, email even we'll if email. we're in the same room sometimes. Yeah. Because of you know the lack of tone. Yeah. There's no tone. <laughs> There's no tone. You know what I'm? The tone ruins well, me every time. I get brought down by the tone every yeah. single. See, well, for me, it's about the distraction. So I, yeah. I might send her an email about something we need to know, but if I bring it up, we'll have to talk about it at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm focused on, on <laughs> this <laughs> image. <laughs> nobody so, nobody uh, can hear what you're doing with your head. So I want that vocalized. That's Beverly. Right. You're, you're, she's like <laughs> so, bringing her head back and uh, forth. <laughs> that's well, we don't have to talk about it. <laughs> that, there it is. Yeah, I love <laughs> it. So perfect. We choose to talk about it, okay? (laughs) You said it, and I. No one's going to believe me, but in my mind, from when I said from my perspective, there was something that really stood out to me between you guys, and it always has. It. It was. It's. It is respect. I'm so glad you said it. Absolutely. Um, because that is what always has struck me. You two emanate a tremendous amount of respect for each other, and it's astonishing to me sometimes, because maybe this sounds like a Debbie Downer. It seems rare mm, yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and, and even in our own, even in my own marriage and my own business, I know that that's what I need to strive for because uh -huh. if that's not there, things fall apart. Right. Is that your experience? <laughs> Well, yeah, and I think it's a decision. You make that decision, yeah. and people think, you know, uh, you just kind of roll with, with the way you feel. But I think that, that type of respect is a decision. There's times it's super easy, and there's times it's probably not. Right. And and it doesn't change the decision, so you just you follow the decision because in the long run, it's the right thing to grow together, you know, as a couple right. and to grow the business together right. and to be partners in, in all things. So. I, it's funny. I could I can actually talk about this for the rest of the day <laughs> yeah, with it, you guys. Um, it's important, but we're 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 supposed to, you know, if we get back on task, we're supposed to talk about images that speak. A perfect topic, I think, coming from you guys. Um, it it resonates a lot for me, and it just seems to make a lot of sense. Give me a rundown on what you mean by that. Images that speak. Well, they're images to tell the story of the people we portray, mm -hmm. and they go deeper than the technical side of photography. I think a lot of people think being technically excellent is the goal, mm -hmm. and it is not even close to the goal okay. for us. Okay. Technical excellence, to me, makes photography invisible so that the message rises to the top. Um, you think, think about like flipping through a local, maybe a public access station or something. And, and there's somebody sharing a message and you're like, wow, that's a great message, but the camera goes out of focus or it bumps or what do you do? You change your channel. Uh -huh. You miss the message okay. for technical being technically excellent at photography should be a couple of things. Number one, it should be a given. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm right. just saying it should be a given because that's the platform you carry your, your message on. Right. And then it should be intact all the time because, but it should never be the goal. It should be the goal to be excellent, but that's only the foundation like you build the house on. So images that speak for us is really about the journey uh, my father took me on of being technically excellent. And then Bev came in and we put together, it's like, where's the emotion? Because I taught at the University of Kentucky for a little while. I taught photojournalism. By the way, I'm one lousy photojournalist. <laughs> well, it's a good thing you but were teaching. I knew a heck of a lot more than they did. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I would see these, these folks, and I thought they were the saddest of the group. Mm. They would bring me an image for a portfolio piece, and it was maybe the side of a building of a brick wall. It was perfectly exposed, and yeah. it, all the lines were straight, and it was tack sharp. Right. And they'd get a D, and they'd say, ah, "What's wrong with it? It's it's perfect. It's sharp. It's this. There's no message. Yeah. There's nothing underneath it." So images that speak was really the journey we started with relationship photography. Part of the campaign and the messages messaging we went to to say we're more about telling the story through photography that's excellent, but it's not complete when it's excellent. It's about who you are and what you're celebrating. Would you say, Tim, initially that that's not, that this concept in particular wasn't something that you would consider innate within yourself? Or, or was this something that Bev really brought up and maybe helped you develop? Well, I, I mean, I hate, I, hate, I hate to answer that because it sounds like a cop-out, but I'd say both. Yeah. Um, I really would because inside of me, I never got into photography to be technically excellent. I told you earlier that my father was passionate. Right. I wanted something I could be passionate about. Okay. So I never looked at it and said, wow, I could, you know, I could master a camera or I could master a light. It was, none of that ever really entered my mind. Mm -hmm. it, it, it came about, but, but my father, his work had emotion, but not the depth. Okay. Because it was more therapy for him. He was right. a very calculated shooter. Right. So I had this inside of me, but I didn't know it when Bev came. She's her favorite thing. It used to drive me nuts. As I said, well, you can't do that. Well, why not? Well, I don't know. There's well, what book's that in? I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> and and she challenged me because she was so creative. Yeah. And I thought, well, no, now you can't do that because that's technically wrong. She didn't have that side of it, right. but she had such a creative bend right. that it it really pushed me to the out to the outside of my thinking, and I, and it was a combination of the two that brought us where we are. So, but you wouldn't let me get by with bad stuff. No, and she never did. I mean, when she started kicking my butt in competition, I thought, my God, I've created a monster. Did that happen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sad to say it happened more than once. <laughs> yeah, but you took it well. I took it well. well I cried in well. silence. 
<laughs> I didn't take it well when you beat me. I will be honest. No, that's true. It's I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to the not, banquet. I was around. like, I'm not going. That was not fair play. I finally got back and beat her one time, <laughs> and she didn't want to go to the banquet. I cried half the day. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. That's I. I. I believe you guys 100. percent It's interesting. We would. We used to say those types of things about um, some competition we had. You know, we were with. We were up against the woods. Yeah. Uh, which you guys, who you guys know really oh, yeah. well. Um, another husband and wife team. And we would say that about them, that they helped, we helped each other drive each other. But it's it's interesting to me that you guys, since you're both photographers, because I'm was i not a photographer, it's interesting to me that you guys had that internally, right? To both right. drive right. each other. Exactly. But, and I, I don't think I realized it was to that degree. But it's, right. it seems like you're really telling the truth, that you really helped each other in well, that way it's you jed we can't lie to you but <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. we're like family i'm not gonna look at yeah. you and lie. no but- so that's why if i look over here occasionally I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, you look over to the I'm side lying if i have to pull that out and there was more, his yeah. dad too oh, like when we all the, three competed at the, time, sure. at the in the state sure did your dad compete in regional i don't remember my we dad competed, competed everywhere yeah. nationally yeah. regional got his master's degree yeah. you know, from a wheelchair so but it was we a all really worked healthy... on each other's prints, and yeah. we all helped each other get the get because it was eighteen prints to get ready for state. Of course, right. six each. Right, right. That was a lot of work. So that right. helped. That helped both of you guys kind of up your game. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, yeah. His dad would say to me, "I'd bring my work to him. I wanted to enter for the year, and his dad would every year would look at it and go, "You could do better." <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, Bob, I can't. <laughs> this is it. This, this is, is the best. pinnacle. This is the this best. This is the I have. pinnacle. And then one time he printed something for me. I actually won the I won the very first Kodak Elite Gallery Award, first place. Right? I won a Hasselblad camera. Oh my! And it was a black and white. And his dad, his dad came up to me and said, "Well, you can thank me. I saved you in the dark room. Saved <laughs> oh. you in the printing. Yeah. Saved you in the That's printing." Awesome. I'm like, "Thanks, Bob." That's awesome. And then he'd say, "I'd rather be lucky." than good any day oh my god <laughs> like, oh what my are gosh. you do- he was tough you know, he, was he was a tough mentor he buddy was trying to toughen you up he toughened me up mm-hmm. i guess he would go mm-hmm. nah, i don't think so i thought you were gonna say he came to you and said you can do better after you win that camera and <laughs> no first he knew <laughs> this is the weird thing he knew do you remember he put a ro- he made yeah, a little handmade rosette on it oh. when he handed it back to me yeah. and he put a, a, a like a 98 on it or something he that's said awesome. this is your winner that's so good and that was before all that, that happened before it, right? yeah. oh yeah. yeah he saw it coming. he knew it, it was a good mentor and a wicked sense of humor yeah, yeah he was uh, good all the way through that's a good combination yeah yeah in, in my book. well yeah well you know with his physical challenges he had to have a good yeah. sense of humor yeah, so he, he always to. did that's yeah. fantastic how 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 would you talk to somebody else if okay, so someone let's say someone's newer or even in the first five or ten years and they really want to get to that next level you know of evolution in their in their career and in their business and and they think i want i want that i want to create images that speak because maybe what you're saying resonates with them maybe they're yes i got a lot of this tech you know my images are tax sharp i i know the rule of thirds i've got my lighting down i'm doing this that and the other thing but i want images that speak what do you say to them well there's lots of things first i'd say you know define your style who are you what makes your heart beat faster as bev always tells people when Mm -hmm. they define it and then define tightly uh be less concerned that people like what you do and more concerned that they know what you do because when you try to make everybody like what you do you're going to dilute your brand you got to figure out who you are as an artist define it and then you have to it has to have a number of things it it has to have technical excellence we talked about that but the that, given the understood that i that needs to that be piece. a given i yeah right. don't go bragging because you nailed the, the exposure <laughs> right. you know i mean and i'm not making light of how hard that can be no, i'm just saying important. that's not the point right and then the second thing is your art has to have purpose. It has to have maybe, an, uh, an, for us, it's an emotional richness. Mm-hmm. And then we have to learn how to share that with the client. Like, tell us your stories. We're going to share those those stories. I think uh, simplicity is a key to great style. Um, you know, not, not overly complicated um, things where you can really shine with the message. Nothing that takes away from the message. Uh, another thing I tell people is that it, it, investment-worthy art. You know, is your art investment worthy? What makes things investment worthy? And then you stay consistent with it. So those five things, you know, all kind of play in. But it starts with you defining who you are. Mm-hmm. 
and then um, honing it down. And the problem I think we have, Jed, is that we know what we do as artists. So this terrible misunderstanding happens that so does everyone else. Okay, and it's not the case because right. we do too many things. We look like you know, like a just kind of an explosion on our <laughs> website sometimes of of looks right. and styles right. and and so forth. And so right. what happens is we're like, well, I won the blue ribbon for you know for the best three to one lighting ratio, and so <laughs> everybody's going to see that they don't. Right. There, ha there has to be a wide and if, gap. Even if they do, they don't get it. <laughs> no, they don't want to no. even understand the significance so, of what it so is. So be less concerned that everybody likes what you do. More concerned that they know what you do mm -hmm. and what you do, you're excellent at, and that has a purpose right. behind it. I, I have could a go different on, answer. I, I would. I would love it. Talking about like how you get more emotion packed into your images i think it's a reflection of who you are right and your um, your photographs to me are a mirror of what's inside of you okay and i've looked at images that were technically beautiful and felt empty yes and nothing coming off of them and right. i've looked at images uh looked at an image that was like a bride and a groom but it was cropped like where it just had the man's hands around her waist mm -hmm. and i didn't see any faces or anything and i cried Yes. And I questioned, what, what am I doing standing here crying? And right. I think it was the, it, it, I don't know, I think what an artist puts into the image is a piece of themselves, and then the viewer grabs that piece, and it affects them one way or the other, or doesn't affect them at all. Right. So I think it's what's inside of you, your, your heart that's in that piece that creates the emotion. And I remember when we kind of, when he first started, I don't know if you remember this, we, we read a lot of poetry yeah, mm -hmm. and just kind of worked on accessing our heart and what do we feel about things and getting that deeper and vun and being vulnerable. That, I was going to, I was going to get to that word too. It's I was, so I was going to start with this. I was going to start. It sounds as though what you guys are saying is that it's very relational in nature. Right, it so is. it is. It's it like is. that. So establishing and nurturing that connection with your client, yes, it, and it right. has to happen fast. I mean, you have to be a person that can that can make a friend in an instant, okay. And people let their walls down and become themselves because the camera room is the most unnatural place to be in front right. of the camera, okay. And um, like Tim talks a lot too about like techniques for kind of making the camera invisible so they're not so aware of it mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But I mean, we've had our camera room compared to a spa experience. It's dark and it's quiet and it's there's a there's a peace about it. It's the opposite of what you would expect. Yeah, yeah. and it's From soft music, standpoint. beautiful, relaxing, a waterfall when you walk in, and right. and just a, a peaceful. And we're peaceful and very quiet in the camera room. We're not very boisterous and yelling and giggling and squeaking toys and stuff. We're very quiet uh, when we work with. Because we work a lot with young children, of course. And, you know, that kind of thing. Well, we learn the stories ahead of time. I think you set the tone ahead of time, too, for that to be effective. Because, you know, we're going to, you're going to say, you know, Jed, if this portrait were a chapter in your life, what would the bold print be? I love that. What would the bold print be? Yeah. And, you know, you might say, this baby's our miracle baby, or this mm. is like the time I've dreamed of in my life. Now, somehow, and I don't know how, but I can promise you, somehow that's going to translate, even in the most abstract, unusual way. I'm going to see something in the body language, something in the way you look at that child, or something that happens that I'm going to be able to remind you of that when we look at the image. And that way we're not saying, okay, Jed, don't you love your expression here? I'm from the South. My mama would smack me. I look great. I'm so handsome. <laughs> it's like, that just didn't happen. So you don't ask those kind of questions. Right. You say, do you remember that story you told me oh my about your daughter? Oh, I see that here. Oh my! And word. then it changes the entire perception of everything. How I mean, does everybody not cry? I'm get, I'm well enough. How does yeah. everybody not cry? Well, except us, they all they do. do. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have Kleenex in oh, there, man. Oh, <laughs> it's a it's a, it's very it's it's all a very tender moment. Yeah, it I is, mean, but in in the vulnerability in every, piece, in every part of it yeah. is very we're we're very quiet. We're very. Um, relational like you say mm. we make friends we jump we get over that wall that separating wall of you're my client and you're a transaction and i'm thinking of dollars when i see you and it's right i mean our clients are like our friends how yeah. do you muster the courage to really get to that 
vulnerability piece because it that's what it requires i think maybe it right. comes very natural to you too and i'm not surprised if it does mm-hmm. but think, what do you say yeah. to somebody else that it, where it doesn't well it comes natural to me but i don't think it comes natural for personally for speaking for myself to the degree that i want it to and right. so a part of getting it to that degree is what you do before a session and so this is why for us it's so important that we get to know our clients mm-hmm. and we have a design appointment. Mm-hmm. We don't use design appointments to say, here's 10 backgrounds, which one do you like? Right. I mean, and there's, that's fine if that's your brand, and, you know, yeah. but that's not a Walden brand. Right. You know, we, want to, we want to connect with them at a level ahead of time. Yes. We want to stack the deck in our favor mm-hmm. because when we do that, we stack it in their favor as well. I like that. And so, you know, it's in the competition between your customer, you know, got to teach them what all they don't know. No, no, no. It's, it's just to get on the same page and then to ask those questions and to set that course that this is why you come here. And people, when they go to a studio and that's what you talk about, that creates a level of buzz. Mm. And that buzz is, in my estimation, kind of what's replaced loyalty because buzz is, it has, you know, it's a higher energy. It's a higher depth of experience. So all that ties in, then you go in the camera room, you fulfill that, you know? So there's, it's like a layer cake. I'm always thinking about food. <laughs> like, <laughs> you and me both, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. You and me both. Put all those layers together. Everything and then, you're saying. Yeah. I, you sent that to me. You said loyalty seems dead today, but buzz isn't. That's right. That's and right. And that really struck me. I thought, you know what? That's yeah. tweetable. I was a pallbearer at, at loyalty's uh, funeral. Yes. <laughs> what, He's gone, baby. What <laughs> happened? What happened? Um, well, I, th- I think the, the world happened. You know, all of a sudden, everything is fast. Mm. Everybody mm. has information at mm-hmm. their fingertips. There's too many people saying, well, come get my photographs. Come get my photographs. I do this. I do that. So loyalty used to be like, well, Jed, it was great getting a portrait done by you guys and we'll be back that you can't do that anymore. It's like, Jed, this was an amazing experience. It creates a conversation. Uh, I become an evangelist for you because the way I was treated, you know, it was just over the top. Yeah. Uh, the problem with that mindset is you have to be consistent at it. Mm. People hear that and they don't have any business. So they call in trumpet players and, and grand chefs and they you know, you walk in and say, whoa, look right, at this. But right. then the second time somebody comes in, it's like they're a stepchild. You know? right. It's like, who needs you? <laughs> right. So you have right. to do this stuff consistently, but buzz is a, is a level above. It's an experience-based energy and, and application and execution yeah. that you can do consistently that marries with your art and causes people to want to be evangelists for you. And I think we're in an experience economy. We're not in, you know, it, it's all, what the, there was a quote in one of the books I read, something like, uh, people will leave a business that they're highly satisfied with these days. Yes. Just for a new will. experience. Yes, they will. For they? a new and different experience. And I think there's, I think we're in an experience economy. We've got to be a little more of a risk taker to figure out what experience our clients might want. And um, I also think that the generation coming up needs to know that you have a purpose. Like, it's not just like I have a business, I'm a good photographer. It's like my purpose is to tell people stories, working with charities, things like that, that, that give you a deeper reason to be in business, a purpose. Is it, is it harder than it used to be? Yeah. Yeah. It is harder because you can't rest. Yeah. You know, like, like in the, when, when were the years that were like the, you said you could drop a camera. I remember that year. <laughs> <laughs> that year. I remember that month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a good you said, month. You said you could drop a camera, whatever it took. You could charge people yeah. for it and they would grand, they, yeah. tell, yeah. sell it for 10 grand that thank you and come yeah. back again. And, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, we were teaching in the school like a two or three, four years ago or something. And you said, I thought by this time. We could rest. Yeah. yeah, but it went the other way. And it, but we're it working did. harder than we ever have. Yeah, but in, but the good side of that is is and it takes it it's, it keeps you energized. Yeah, and I think I think running a business today, it, like I really know, is like surfing. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, I've never surfed in my life, but, but it's, it's like you feel that water under you, you know, you're always shifting your yeah. balance. Yes. Basically you got to keep your core values and principles. You have to keep your brand. You can't throw your brand out, but you have to shift as that water shifts mm-hmm. and say, what does that mean? Uh, and, you know, and, and 
and what do I have to do because of that? Like today, I think there's a, a, a really a need for uh, the craftsmanship message mm -hmm. that 10 years ago, nobody cared that we, you know, that these were archival pieces we're doing. That. Right. I mean, we would tell them it was there, but yeah, it's, but today people buy value. That's not price. It's value. Mm -hmm. And so I think because things come so quick and because they come so easy and there's so many people there, we have to message a layer of craftsmanship that we never had to, of what, what makes our art unique, mm. but we have to do it in bite-sized pieces so we don't take the emotion away. And we're always right. talking left brain. Yeah. It's still an emotional purchase, mm. but they want a validation. They want value. I'll give you my money, but I want to know that I'm not wasting my money. Right. So. Right. Brilliant. <laughs> what, what, what resources do you guys have for people? Like if someone's like, I want, I want more of this, where, where can they go? Well, the best place to go, we're building, we've got a new site up. It's, it's built and we're adding to it all the time at timwalden.com. Okay. And we're doing a lot of uh, short and long mentorships. Mm -hmm. We're doing two, three, four month mentorships. We're doing private one-on-one -on -one mentorships mm -hmm. and we're doing year long mentorships in groups and then coming together with a retreat. So it's tiered. at the end of it. Yeah. Options. And, uh, yeah. so yeah, so you can kind of find where you fit. We mm -hmm. still have a coaching site that's going great. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's at waldencoaching.com. That's okay. a monthly. We add content. It's got a big library. It's full of great information. And then we're and that's at Walden Coaching. And then at timwalden.com is where Bev and I are putting our mentorship efforts. And it's a passion. I mean, to to see somebody to make a difference in somebody's business, or to hear them say, you know, first session out or first sale out or whatever just made all this worthwhile right you, you know you're like ah, then you know that's that's exciting yeah it's, that's exciting it, it is it's it's fulfilling yeah it is you guys are great well thank you well, you're you pretty are great too, too. <laughs> that's why <I> <laughs> 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 yeah, mutual admiration <laughs> yeah. i i really appreciate your time i i it's this is a this is a big deal to me and vicky's gonna be jealous that i got to do this and she wasn't yeah. here we'll have to do it again we, no her. we love vicky we love your family <laughs> thank you that is that is very mutual have a great rest of the convention and a great day thank uh, you thanks for including us. we appreciate it until next time